Welcome to this service here at Grace St. Paul's in Tucson. A special welcome to all who are listening in around the diocese in other parishes and other towns and cities, and to those beyond the state of Arizona who are with us in spirit on this Sunday. Three announcements. There is now a Zoom Sunday School that has been organized by Jessica Swift and Madeline Caldwell. It meets each Sunday at 9.15 on Zoom. And Jessica is also starting a youth group for grades 7 through 12. And you can communicate with her with her email that's listed in the bulletin. And if you would like to download a bulletin for this service on another device, go to gsptucson.org slash bulletins. Joseph's Pantry is in need of more canned tuna, beef stew, peanut butter, hygiene products, and dog and cat food. And finally, this week, Interfaith Power and Light will be giving short videos on Earth Day that features Bishop Jennifer, Reverend Pam Hyde, Canon for Creation, and our rector, Father Steve Keplinger. And that's at azipl.org. Welcome to this service. Glorious Easter to you. Let us worship our Christ. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day to walk in the light. This, this is, is the day, day to share signs of, of peace. peace. This is the day to believe what we have not seen. This, this is, is the day, day to remember what we, we cannot touch. touch. Come, let us celebrate the God of resurrection and life. Oh, 
May Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of life, you have promised to be with us every day, also in difficult days, in times like these. Give us clarity in our minds, strength in our work and discernment, rest as we sleep, peace in our minds. Be with those who need help even more than we do. Help us to see what we can offer from your abundant love. Amen. A reading from Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you, according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it is impossible for him to be held in power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will fill me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. I 
shall not sacrifice to false gods, nor shall I speak their names with my lips. But you, O God, are my portion and my cup. It is you who sustain my life. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the one who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. You will show me the path of life. Alleluia. I have set the Holy One always before me. With God at my side I shall not fall. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your beloved suffer death. You will show me the path of life, in your presence is fullness of joy. In your hand are the pleasures that endure. You will show me the path of life. Alleluia. Una lectura de uno Pedro. Alabemos al Dios y Padre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, que por su gran misericordia nos ha hecho nacer de nuevo por la resurrección de Jesucristo. Esto nos da una esperanza viva y hará que ustedes reciban la herencia que Dios les tiene guardada en el cielo, la cual no puede destruirse, ni mancharse, ni mancharrarse. Por la fe que ustedes tienen en Dios, Él los protege con su poder para que alcancen la salvación que tiene preparada, la cual dará a conocer en los tiempos últimos. Por esta razón están ustedes llenos de alegría, aun cuando sea necesario que durante un poco de tiempo pasen por muchas pruebas, porque la fe de ustedes es como el oro. Su calidad debe ser probada por medio del fuego. La fe que resiste la prueba vale mucho más que el oro, el cual, el cual se puede destruir. De manera que la fe de ustedes, al ser así probada, Merecerá aprobación, gloria y honor cuando Jesucristo aparezca. 
Ustedes aman a Jesucristo, aunque no lo han visto. Y ahora, creyendo en Él sin haberlo visto, se alegran con una alegría tan grande y gloriosa que no pueden e expresar yo con palabras porque están alcanzando la meta en su fe, que es la salvación. Oigan lo que el Espíritu está diciendo al pueblo de Dios. Dimos gracias a Dios. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening of the day of the resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, 
unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in, the, in his hands, in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, little congregation. And to all of you listening in, remember to breathe and be comfortable. When I was growing up in a town of 32,000 in northeast Alabama, where the Appalachian Mountains begin to give way to the flatness that is heading south, I remember Easter sunrise services held in a cemetery. A chorus from the high school might offer an anthem. Those were chilly mornings in northeast Alabama, and they required a light coat. Yet, as far as I know, no one was posing a question about the resurrection's meaning. This was Baptist country, Methodist country, the 1950s deep south that was still in a deep sleep. Intellectual curiosity was not encouraged. As far as I know, no one was asking questions about the resurrection. The stories in the Gospels were swallowed whole. Inconsistencies among the different accounts were not seen, and if they were, they certainly weren't mentioned out loud. At that time, no one seemed to be wondering over the difference between a resuscitation and a resurrection. Hence, Christian people seemed to think that the crucified body of Jesus, the corpse, got up revivified and walked and talked like any other living and breathing human on that first Easter morning. What if the resurrection cannot be precisely defined? What if it really is as elusive as the resurrection accounts suggest? He is not here. He has gone before you into Galilee. He appears. He disappears. We have one of those accounts this morning. All the disciples except Thomas were holed up hiding from the authorities, the religio-political elites, as Professors Borg and Crossan refer to them. The text says they were hiding for fear of the Jews. More literally, these Jesus Jews were hiding from non-Jesus Jews, both at the time of the stories happening, as well as 70 years later, when the Gospel of John was written, at a time with discord, strife, and disagreement in the synagogue between Jews who were now including Jesus and those Jews who remained with traditional Judaism. When the thoroughgoing Jewishness of early Christianity is known, 
There is no room for anti-Semitism. Jesus never converted. He never became a Christian. He was born a Jew, and he died a Jew. And in the Acts passage, when Peter says, you that are Israelites, listen to me, he is saying, as an Israelite myself, I have something to say to you. And when Peter accuses them of crucifying and killing him, unspoken is, and I betrayed and denied him three times, and yet he forgave me and welcomed me back. When these passages are understood in historical context, they can no longer be weaponized by neo-Nazis or white nationalists. The story says Jesus came and stood among them. The locked door could not block him. There he is with these knuckleheads who all scattered and turned their backs on him. He comes with no lecture, no preachy speech, no reminder of their failure. All grace, peace be with you. It is a grace that offends our pride, our attainments, our status, and worldly accomplishments. We want to correct Jesus. Jesus, have you no pride? Have you no self-respect? You're letting them off the hook that easily? Jesus gives them acceptance and belonging. The past is past in this moment. The past is of no consequence to this Jesus, this risen Christ. And he says it the second time, peace be with you. Now we're beginning to wonder that this peace, this shalom, might be at the center of the meaning of the resurrection. This peace being wished upon them, this this shalom of all deepest yearning, wholeness, contentment, joy, belonging. He breathed on them. Like Yahweh breathing into Adam in the primal garden, creating life in a human being. And now the human one, this son of man, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And those that you retain, the sins of any, what are you going to do with them then? If you hold back from forgiving, you're stuck with them. And you get to carry them away around in your life as baggage. And what good does that do you? Retaining grievances, no. That's not what I'm about and not what you're about if you accept me and accept my teachings. The institutional church in a power grab enshrined these words in its collective ego to browbeat and intimidate people into submission of its members. Better watch your step, you sinners. We determine who goes to heaven and who goes to hell. So this commissioning of Jesus' followers is saying, there's a lot of forgiving that needs to be done. Get busy. Not to forgive is to live with deadness because that is the bitterness of the past. Jesus offers his forgiveness, his peace, and enlist the motley crew in spreading the word. If they, if we, a different motley crew, will receive this breath of fresh air, this spirit energy, we arrive at peace in our own skins and can be glad then in one another's presence, as Beekner puts it. In the prodigal son story, after the younger brother has returned home to ask for forgiveness and to accept it, the older brother remains outside 
unable to forgive his brother for his arrogant squandering, and unable to forgive his father, who is now given undeserved forgiveness. We are left wondering if the older brother ever found his way back inside his home to join the welcome home party. We see him. We see ourselves in him, in our own arrogance by insisting that the guilty get their just deserts. We know this kind of holding back, a withholding of ourselves, a reservation of trusting fully in this son of Galilee. Now we wonder if the older brother will find his way back, the way of sloughing off bitterness and wounded pride. For not to forgive edges out the peace of Christ, with forgiveness for everything, everyone, anybody, space is open and prepared. It is good that we don't know the ending of that story, and we don't know if it became a happy ending with family harmony. Now you and I must decide over and over, do I hold tight to my judgments and reap isolation or do I let go? For whatever reasons, Thomas was not around for this meeting on Easter, the first Easter. And so when he heard the report that they, his fellows, had seen the Christ, he decided to reserve judgment, and he wanted to test the veracity of what he was hearing. The term doubting Thomas is known the world over. It too has been weaponized and thrown in the face by someone who seeks to be one up over some other benighted soul. Can't you just hear the church lady on Saturday Night Live? Oh my, have we become a doubting Thomas? In Jennifer Heck's Doubt a History, she notes that only in modern times is doubt considered an automatic rejection of faith. Augustine gives a big thumbs up for doubting. If he doubts, he thinks. If he doubts, he knows he does not know. If he doubts, he judges he ought not to give a hasty assent. It was the later authoritarianism of the church in the Middle Ages that shut down questioning and doubting, and so many of us have felt that legacy of institutional bullying and intolerance of questioning in faith groups all across the spectrum. Fred Beekner reminds us, doubts are the ants in the pants of faith. They keep it awake and moving. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Jesus stood among them for this second time, and then for the third time he repeats, Peace be with you. Put your finger here, see my hands, put your hand in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas has his wow moment, his epiphany. He knows this is the one. Now he knows. There comes a time to doubt doubt. Being a doubter can be a badge of prestige, another ego trap. And it goes down well in many social settings and is far more acceptable to be a doubter than a believer. And doubting can become something that one worships within oneself, an end in itself, with its strong taint of pride. Jesus does not shame Thomas for having doubted. Doubting at its best is a tool and an aid in the journey towards wholeness, in the journey of becoming who you were created to become. The time has now come for Thomas to take the next step. Believe, 
not the intellectual kind of accepting dogma and creeds, but the heartfelt giving over of saying yes to the Christ who is right before him, right in his face. In this story, belief is joined with seeing and touching. When your seeing opens you up to feeling touched and moved beyond your present limitations towards wonder and amazement. We are all touching less these days in the physical sense. The hugs, the pats on the back are now postponed until a return to normal, the time past the pandemic. So there's a certain fasting from these familiar ways of connecting and being for all of us. So let us use our seeing to expand our frame, to see in the Christ way that leads to forgiveness, acceptance, and belonging, to see the teachings more deeply that take us into what Richard Rohr calls a larger identity. Thomas could have said no and not be like the single grain of wheat that lets go of its shell. Then he would not have allowed himself to be cracked open. A poem from another faith tradition that says a lot about resurrection, a poem by Rumi. Inside this new love, die. Your way begins on the other side. Become the sky. Take an ax to the prison wall. Escape. Walk out like someone suddenly born into color. Do it now. You are covered with thick cloud. Slide out the side. Die and be quiet. Quietness is the surest sign that you have died. Your old life was a frantic running from silence. The speechless full moon comes out now. Let us join together in an affirmation of faith. We believe in God, whose love is the source of all life and the desire of our lives, whose love was given a human face in Jesus of Nazareth, whose love was crucified by the evil that awaits to enslave us all, and whose love defeating even death is our glorious promise of freedom. Therefore, though we are now fearful and full of doubt, in God we trust. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we commit ourselves in the service of others to seek justice and to live in peace, to care for the earth and to share God's goodness with those suffering from anxiety to live in the freedom of forgiveness and the power of the spirit of love and in the company of the faithful, so to be the church when the world needs church. Amen. <clears throat> Living Christ, you are risen from the dead. You are stronger than death. Raise our eyes to see you as the new day dawns, 
Give us the faith, like Thomas, to doubt, knowing that when we seek the truth, we find you. We pray for the church. For the household of faith, the church of the risen Christ, we pray. Be, Be with, with us and bless us, us O oh God. God. For all who are affected by coronavirus, through illness or isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery. For the welfare of the world, we pray. Be, Be with, with us, us and, and unite us, us O oh God. <clears throat> For those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies, that they may make wise decisions. For our nation and our common good, we pray. Be, Be with, with us, us and guide us, us O oh God. For doctors, nurses, and medical researchers, and through their skill, insight, and courage, many will be restored to health. For those who care for us, we pray. Be, Be with, with us and, and help, help us, us O oh God. God. For first responders, for those on the front lines and those who support them, we give thanks for their courage and pray for their safety. For all who put their lives on the line for us, we pray. Be, Be with, with them, them and care, care for, for them, them O oh God. God. For the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. For all who suffer and struggle, we pray. Be, Be with, with us and, and heal us, us O oh God. God. When fears multiply and danger threatens, when sickness comes and death confronts us, it is God's blessing of shalom that sustains us and upholds us, lightening our burden, dispelling our worry, restoring our strength, renewing our hope, reviving us. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Look at my hands and my feet, touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones.
Let us pray together. Holy One, we know that you are as truly present in our reaching out to one another as in the sacrament of the table. We love you at the heart of all things and long for you in our souls. Since we cannot gather together to receive you in that sacrament, come and abide spiritually in our hearts. Knowing that you have already come, we embrace you and unite ourselves entirely to you. Never let us fear that we are separated from you, from one another, from your creation, every single grain of sand of it. Christ is in the midst of us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. And our Savior, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When Mary, ready to embalm the dead, ran in fear from the empty tomb, it was Easter Day. When Thomas touched the wounds and set himself free, it was Easter Day. When Emmaus became synonymous with welcome and the breaking of bread with strangers, it, it was, was Easter day. day. When the hungry are fed at the same table as the rich, it, it is, is Easter, Easter day. day. When weapons are beaten to plowshares and peace is a word to be shouted, it, it is, is Easter, Easter day. day. When we return from our distancing to gather at God's beloved community, Together again, it is, it is Easter, Easter Day. Day. Amen. Walk in the light of God, live in the light of God, bask in the light of God. May the light of all lights transform your doubts and fear into faith and your sorrows into hope. Go with the peace and blessing of God, Creator, Resurrected Son, and in our midst, Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us stay home for a while longer, rejoicing in the power of the resurrection. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.